What's up, Bulls fans? Welcome back to Let's Talk Bulls, your number one Bulls podcast in Chicago. On this episode, we're talking about the Chicago Bulls losing their first game after the All-Star break, 129-112 to to the Boston Celtics, in a game where most Bulls fans knew they would lose anyway. This was a game where we came in playing one of the best teams in the league and arguably one of the best players in the NBA in Jason Tatum, and we just did not have enough to pull out the victory. With that, though, we also had a great game from Ayo Sumu, and we saw Vooch put in work looking like Orlando Magic Vooch, but the Bulls could not make it work, completely crumbling in that fourth quarter. We're going to talk about that right after the intro. Welcome to the Let's Talk Bulls podcast. Welcome back, guys, to Let's Talk Bulls, your number one Bulls podcast in Chicago. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that bell notification so you're notified when I drop more of these videos. But that, let's get into it. A big part of this game, why the Celtics won was Jalen Brown with 21 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists, and honestly, the bigger part is probably Derek White with 28 points, 3 rebounds, 5 assists, and 3 blocks. The Bulls tried their best to stay in this game in the first half, even leading at halftime, but part of that was... Jason Tatum didn't have a good first half, right? He only had five points, and the Bulls found a way to take the lead, even though Kobe White had barely scored and DeMar DeRozan only had about two points. But what you know from a Chicago Bulls team, (laughs) right, is we don't play every quarter of a game. You also know from a great team like Boston, they're going to come out in the second half and make things work, and that's exactly what happened. The Bulls played their best in the first to keep it in. Vooch had a great game to start it out, but in that second half, Jason Tatum took over, having 25 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists, and 3 steals. Honestly, I believe 17, 18 of those points came in the third. He really took over over this game and made sure he left his impact so the Bulls could not fight their way back, right? The Bulls went down by 16, fought their way back to have the lead, and then in halftime completely crumbled and went back down by 16, which turned into 17, and it just kept growing until you had to take out the starters. It's one of those games where the Celtics saw their stars do the work that you needed to do, but they also saw a great game from Derek Wright, who honestly with his 28 points and his three blocks, took over. He played a Alex Caruso-type game for the Celtics. He was everywhere, fighting on the defensive end, putting an effort on the offensive end, and just being all over the court doing the little things that really help you win. Um, Porzingis had 14 points, four rebounds. He didn't do a lot. He was in foul trouble most of the game. Um, and Justin Holiday with nine points, three rebounds, six assists, didn't do much as well, which is why, honestly, I think the Bulls had a chance at halftime to actually actually win this game is because they were holding people accountable they were playing good defense they were moving on the defensive end covering for the other man but in the second half they just fell apart especially in the fourth quarter and the fourth quarter it became a three-point shooting competition for the Celtics they just started to throw them up and watch them go down and the Bulls just couldn't compete Right, But that takes me to the Bulls and the game that they had. Um, First, we're going to talk about DeMar DeRozan, 19 points, 4 rebounds, 5 assists. I do want to talk a little bit about DeMar and what I've been seeing lately. DeMar has not been getting the same type of foul calls that we've seen the last couple years um, driving to the rim. And you can see it's frustrating him. I do hope that we start to see him stop complaining as much. I understand that he is angry about not getting calls, but this is like the third or fourth time this year I've seen him get a technical from screaming at a ref because he thinks he should have got a foul called. And it's one of those things where you're not getting the calls that you think you should. You got to play through it and you got to keep playing aggressive and keep doing the work because arguing is not going to make it happen. It seems like this year the refs don't want to call anything for DeMar and you got to fight through that and make sure you keep playing playing a way that will help the Bulls win, and technical fouls is just not the way to do that, right? That takes me to Vooch. Vooch had a great game this game, 22 points, 14 rebounds, 2 assists, and we saw Orlando Vooch. He was playing 
in the paint. He was playing as a big man, and his shot, his little floater was going in. I'm starting to see Vooch really shine in the pick and roll, hitting that mid-range shot when Kobe finds him in the mid-range to pull up. Um, but if you watch this channel, if you watch Bull Central, Chicago Bull Central with Hayes, um, you know that... One of the issues with the Bulls and Vooch playing this way consistently is him and DeMar tend to look for their shot in the same space, right? And that makes it hard for Vooch to try to take these mid-range shots because usually there's already someone standing where he wants to go. But you can see from the last five to ten games, Vooch is really good at hitting that mid-range shot off the pop when he's doing a pick and roll. And I think the Bulls need to really focus on that and try to get him to do that more because his three-point shot just is not going down. All right, that takes me to Alex Caruso. 12 points, 3 rebounds, 5 assists. He did his thing this game. It was an Alex Caruso game. Kobe White, 20 points, 3 rebounds, 4 assists. He had a terrible first quarter. He didn't do a lot in the second quarter. He came to play in the third and fourth. And that's something we're starting to see with Kobe is he's starting out slow and he's starting to pick it up. Um, Stacy mentioned in the game, Kobe's looking a lot better when he's off ball, when he's playing that shooting guard type of position and having someone else handle it. And I do think that takes me to my next player, but I think that is the symbol of Ayo Desumu becoming your starting point guard. Yes, I said it. Ayo had 14.7 rebounds, 8 assists. Ayo Desumu is starting to make a case that he needs to be in the starting lineup, right? He's shooting amazingly. He's getting to the rim. He's getting fouled, and he's making smart decisions. But you see that if he can start to pick up that point guard role and take over, Kobe gets moved to that shooting guard position, which lets him hit open three-point shots. And honestly, get some less pressure. When you look at Kobe's game, he's starting to get full court pressured each and every game by guards. They're trying to take the ball out of his hand. So making him that two guard might help him have an easier time scoring. And we know that when Kobe is scoring, the Bulls are scoring, right? This team really goes by how Kobe White is going most of the time. That takes me to our bench. Julian Phillips got some minutes, nine points, two rebounds, one assist. He did his thing. Julian Phillips is showing each and every game that he is an NBA player. He's showing that he has strength. He's showing he can get to the rim. And I think that next year he's going to really blossom, especially after he puts on some weight in the offseason. You can see him not being afraid to attack the rim. So if he can get stronger, if he can start to really put on weight and get that extra practice in, I can see a lot of his layups this year becoming dunks or poster dunks next year. And that's something to definitely look forward to. Andre Drummond, 11 points. Eight rebounds. Drummond, which is the big man in the post, doing what he needs to do, showing his strength. He had a nice little layup as well this game. And then Javon Carter, two points, one rebound, two assists. We're not going to talk much about him because you know I hate him. Um, Dalen Terry, three points, three rebounds, two assists. Dalen showed a lot on defense this game. He was active. You're starting to see the Bulls' young players be very active, right? And that's a good thing. Julian Phillips, Dalen Terry are using their minutes to really show what they can do. We did see some bit, bit of moments. Uh, he only took two shots. But, hey, he was on the floor. The team was on the floor, right? That's all you want to see from a Bulls fan when it comes to him. Get the man some minutes in the NBA. We want to see him. I think next year is when we're going to start to see him. He's been doing great in the G League. He's been really hitting his, his three-point shot. He's been showing some confidence. But the Bulls did all you can ask for the first three quarters of this game. All right, they looked aggressive. They looked competitive. You know, our competitive word we've been fighting for, which AK wants us to live by, you know? They tried to look like they could fight one of the best teams in the league, but in that fourth quarter, they completely just crumbled, right? They lost defensive assignments. Boston was hitting every three-point shot they wanted to take, and that's the issue with this team is we can look amazing, one, two, three quarters, but we can never look amazing all four quarters, and they really need to fix that if they want to take the next step. Hopefully the Bulls take what happened tonight. They realize they have to keep a consistent effort all four quarters and do something to make sure that this team works their way to be better because at this point this year, I don't expect much. I'm really waiting towards next year to see what the Bulls really can do. With that, I do want to ask a question. So down below in the comment section, let me know who do you think will be the best player on the Bulls next season. I'm going to give you three options. Do you think it's going to be Kobe White, 
Io DeSumo or Julian Phillips? Who's going to have the best year next year? Leave it down in the comment section. And with that, I hope you all have a wonderful night. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know I was gone for a little bit. I had to go to the All-Star Weekend for work um, and then got a little bit busy with work and everything. So videos will start resuming again. I love to see y'all. I love that y'all are rocking with the channel. I hope you all have a great night. Peace. Thank you.